Well, hello, it's me, more or less. All right, today's theme is going to be I don't know what the hell is going on or what I should be doing, or something of that nature. I'll try to come up with a theme as I talk, because right now I've actually been doing mainly writing, and that has been occupying most of my time. So, for the time being, I decided, you know what, I need to crank something out real fast. I can't just, because of the nature of the way that I make videos and the nature of the videos themselves, it is very time consuming. It is very time consuming to do many things. So as a result, I've been focusing on trying to crank out scripts as opposed to videos. That way I can have other people work on the more mundane, like editing side of things. Whereas I concentrate on whatever it is that I need to concentrate on, which in probably my case will be something more like animation, something of that nature. So I don't know yet what exactly I'm going to be doing, but this is what happens whenever I know I need to get something out. Like I don't, technically I don't need to get anything out, but I should, because that's what YouTubers do, or so I'm told. So as a result, a lot of this is just going to be me just trying to fly through a drawing. And that's the more important thing. Um, I find this... Actually, this video will probably be more about the nature of... Not working under constraints, but just the nature of how your mentality affects your, your drawing style, I guess. I probably should have just stayed with that. Thinking about this. But anyways, yes. The subject matter of this particular video will be uh, knee socks from Panty and Stocking with the Garter Belt, I think is the name of the show. Uh, knee socks is always my favorite of the girls, as it were. Uh, people always debate who's best girl. It is obviously knee socks. Hmm. I've drawn her. Hmm. I've drawn her a couple times, I think. But not enough that I'm anywhere near used to actually drawing her correctly. She's one of those characters that's actually pretty simple to draw, but at the same time, you can get her wrong very easily. Uh, there's quite a few characters like that in my experience. But in regards to her, a lot of it is just the the nature of the show. The show itself has sh such a defined style, but yet, like it it varies. It depends on what's going on. Uh, it shifts styles radically from episode to episode. But the the core sort of comedic pseudo western style is always there. Um, so there's a little bit of leverage in regards to getting the character to look right. In regards to her, she's pretty well defined as long as you get the general shape of the hair right, and you throw in that horn, and kind of furrow the shape of the eyes and include the glasses, and that's pretty much all you need to get across that this is Nizox. So she's a nice character in that regards. Now, the next probably <laughs> 20 minutes of this drawing is probably going to be uh, me going through trying out different kinds of body poses. Like here I was thinking about the idea of maybe if I drew her with a long v-neck of some sort, whether a t-shirt or a, like a business suit or something, I could just draw that and not actually draw her shoulders at all and just have it sort of fade into the, uh, the background. But I was, I don't know, I just... I had, I had the same mentality as I sort of have right now, in that this was not a drawing that I wanted. Like, it, this probably impacts things more than anything else. This That's what this video is going to be about. It's going to be about drawing whenever you don't want to draw. Um, or working whenever you don't want to work. Which is pretty much all the time, right guys? Yeah, you and me. You and me against the world. Um... Drawing is a little bit different in that regard because if you, anytime that you work whenever you don't want to work, it does affect the quality of your work. But with something like making music or writing or just anything that's art related, creative is a uh, creative outlet, it is way more apparent because you can build like a, a chair and you're not in the right mentality to build a chair and it's kind of shitty or whatever. But it's still a chair, and most people aren't going to notice, like, oh, this one leg is a little bit wobbly or something. And then you say, oh, yeah, I carved the notches wrong whenever I made that leg or, you know, whatever it happens to be. But with the drawing, it's the whole thing. With the song, it's the whole thing. 
Like, everything works together, and if it's not working, it's not working. And I've talked about this in the past, is that your body chemistry has a lot to do with it as well. There have been many times where I've woken up and uh, I just do not have whatever brain juice I need in order for me to draw correctly. So as a result, it just looks like garbage no matter what I do. And you're just going to have days that are like that. Where sometimes you can even feel good, but you just don't have it that day. Whatever that it happens to be from a chemical uh, standpoint. And this particular day, I definitely did not have it. Um, there, are some, there are some times when I'm drawing and I can feel that everything's going right. Like, absolutely everything is hitting on all cylinders. And there I briefly had the idea of, well, what if I just redraw the whole damn thing? Because I was getting in one of those moods. And sometimes it does, doesn't come together for whatever reason. Uh, and in this case, you know, I like Nisak, but I did not want to be drawing at the moment. Actually, on this particular day, the internet was down completely because... The previous day, I had been trying to stream on Twitch... If you didn't know that I streamed on Twitch. And this is sort of approaching the final uh, pose that I do. Um, and I noticed, huh, that's weird. My uh, connection is still there, but I'm dropping a huge amount of frames. And it turned out that it had something to do with the back end on the tower that I get internet from. Um, they replaced equipment there. And then overnight, lightning struck it. So that took out everything on the tower. So they had to replace that. Um, and afterwards, I had to call them because they had forgotten to do it. Uh, about what needed to be done in regards to getting our internet back working. I wanted to know if they had finished installing equipment or not. Oh, and as a result, I had to change the routing settings locally on my computer and go directly into the line, the Cat5, ignore the uh, router completely, and log into their uh, OS on the uh, the satellite that I'm not supposed to have access to, technically, <laughs> and uh, go in and fix the settings in there before I could actually reconnect. And after that, we hit internet for about 10 minutes. And then after about 10 minutes, everything went out again for the rest of the day. The day. And it went out the rest of the day because apparently something else had gone wrong. And it was just one of those days. Like, there was a lot of things going on. I was trying to get some work done. I was thinking about the fact that I hadn't released anything in a while. Uh, I was focusing as well on, as a result, trying to get these scripts done, even though... Once I get the scripts done, I don't know where I'm going to ship them out to. Because hiring out people... Like, I really love the the stuff that uh, uh, Greymine uh, came up with for the uh, Let's Gripe About Villains thing. And I'll definitely be attempting to use him again if, he'll, uh, if he wants that. Um, but doing things like that is expensive. Like, it's expensive in terms of his time that he has to put forward. And it's going to be expensive, of course, in terms of uh, the m money I have to uh, uh, meet out in order to uh, 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 pay for his time, right? And that's going to be the same for anyone else that I hire in. And while I don't have too many m money concerns because I don't have that many expenses, uh, I really don't make that much. I'm still pretty near, you know, minimum wage for the most part. Like, I'm above that, thanks to you guys, and I definitely appreciate that. But it's not like I can just run around throwing... Uh, money around in every direction. While I don't value money too much, I actually hold it in contempt more than anything else because it gets in the way of so many things and it kind of turns people into assholes in some circumstances. It's just something I don't like to ever have to worry about. Uh, I do understand this value and I know that I shouldn't just be running around throwing it at things, right? Um, so all that compiles into one bad day where I'm just trying to get something done. And uh, Nisox, unfortunately, is the uh, recipient of that. Um, I mean, I'm sure to you it still looks fine and everything, but to me, the nature of drawing with... 
to, to me, there's a rhythm of drawing. Um, and there's even some days where I wake up and I feel like I'm hitting on all cylinders today. Uh, uh, everything's going great. I'm drawing very well. All my, um, like the symmetry is very natural to what I'm doing. Uh, the construction of my models is going well. I don't have to worry about like shapes or anything like that being wonky. I'm not drawing it askew. But I will get overly ambitious. And as a result, I will do something like spend two hours just working on absolutely nothing except for um, model construction. And trying to come up with a really nice looking pose or something like that. And then once I finally have that pose, I become so frustrated with trying to get it just right that once I actually start trying to do something like go on to my second primary or something to uh, to shore up the actual um, uh, shape of the, the model or even move on to line work or something, then I've lost it. The, the it that I woke up with is just not there anymore. And now I just feel like garbage. Uh, so as a result, I just have to stop. It's not, like I have said in the past, I've done many different kinds of labor. I've done physical labor, mental labor, creative labor, all sorts of things. With creative labor, if you run out of that, you just, you cannot keep working. It's not like doing physical labor, where if you you just get irritated and uh, you're exhausted or something, then you can just like get something to eat or just take a break for a few minutes, and then you go right back to it and you might feel fine. Or you can just power through it because it's just physical labor. You're just going to be tired. And even after you get a good night's rest, sometimes it depends on how much uh, agony you've been putting your body through, in my experience. But you might wake up the next day and feel absolutely fantastic because you actually uh, had that physical exertion. That was certainly the case whenever I was an athlete. I would uh, ab absolutely destroy my body whenever uh, I was doing prep work and everything. And then... Um, like after I played a game or whatever it happened to be, or after practice, the next day I would feel really good because that's the nature of exercise. You might feel like shit, and then the next day you feel great. Um, with creative things, it does not work that way, unfortunately. You have to stop. And not only do you have to stop, sometimes it will not come back to you for a very, very long time. It might be the case that, especially with writing, God, writing is just the worst in this regard. Sometimes you'll just be hitting on all cylinders. Like, it's... Whenever you're, you're writing and everything is just flowing freely, it's amazing. Because just all the thoughts sort of flow from one to another. Uh, there, there's famous examples of poets that write these incredibly... Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Um... They write these amazing poems, and it's just flowing freely, and then they'll get interrupted at the door or something. And then once they get through dealing with the asshole at the door, then it's just gone. Just the whole thing's gone. They no longer had that inspiration, whatever their brain was going through that was leading them to be able to do that in the first place. Just missing. Everything's gone. So whenever you feel it, when you, whenever you feel it, you should be working if you have the opportunity to do so. And if you find that you don't have it, you can't power through. You just can't. It doesn't really work that way. Uh, you have to take a break. You have to reorganize your thoughts. You've got to figure out something else to do that isn't this thing, or else it just is not going to show up. And that's the nice thing about animation, is that once you get through that part of doing all the planning, and you, like with animation, I've got to do... I've got to come up with an idea first, and sometimes that's the hardest thing. And then I have to write the script, and then I have to record all the lines after I've shored up what the script even needs to be. And even that can be complicated because I'm having to come up with, like, what's the rhythm of the scene? Uh, do I have enough time to be able to do this? Like, sometimes, especially with me, I get really wordy with my writing. Uh, this is the problem I'm having now with the script that I'm writing, which is uh, another... Uh, it's, technically, it's another Dragon Ball thing, to be honest. Although, it's going to be much different than the other ones. Um, may not even ever make it. I have no idea. But it's too long, like right now. And I'm not even anywhere near being finished with it. So I'm going to have to spend a lot of time just shoring that up. And scripts can be that way, too. Um, 
And then once I record all the lines, then maybe I'll have to do secondary, tertiary passes on that, just trying to finalize those. Sometimes they don't sound right. Sometimes the quality was off. Sometimes if there was a very prolonged period where I'm having to do a lot of voice work, and this is more common with the lead scribes, then the quality of my voice will go down over time. So there's a distinct discrepancy in the quality of my delivery as time goes on through the video, so I'll have to rectify that. And even like with the animation, whenever I finally get through with all that and I start organizing the the scenes, like drawing out all the scenes, think about the amount of strain that this composition on a single drawing has. Like right here, it took me absolutely forever to just come up with a pose. I'm not even really happy with it, but it's it's done. Like, it's just done. Um, like, even the, the construction of the model, I kind of screwed up on in various ways. But you have to do that with every single scene. And in addition to every single scene, it has to blend together and it has to be shot correctly. A lot of people don't consider, like, if you're shooting a movie or you're, you're shooting a, a TV show or whatever, there's a framing to every scene that controls like the humor of the scene or the, the tone or whatever it needs to be. And that's way more involved than a lot of people might think if they don't have any uh, experience doing creative work. So imagine having to do storyboard and do all this for even something that's as short as like 30 seconds or you know a minute or whatever it is. And by the time that you're done, you know, it, yeah, two months could have gone by in that span of time just because so much is required of you. And, but once you actually are through with that and you're to the point where all the audio is done, all the preliminary, uh, preliminary scenes are done and the thumbnails are laid out and everything, then you can just draw over it in the most mindless way possible. And I cannot tell you how satisfying it is to just have all of it done and be able to just turn your brain off and just work and just do menial labor. Like, I wish I didn't have to do it at all, of course, but compared to compared to the actual creative process, it is so much better. Like, it is just it's so much more relaxing to just be able to shut your brain off. Uh, so whenever you are actually laying out your uh, compositions you will find that the most dangerous section is probably going to be just organizing it. And here I'm stopping for a prolonged period is because while I was drawing, I was also talking on the phone uh, with the internet people, trying to figure out what was going on. So I actually, like even now, I had the phone in one hand, like trying to draw with one hand, uh, managing to like lean over with the other hand and press keys to be able to flip the canvas and whatnot. It's a big pain in the ass, right? So, you really, you really just need to be able to have a good headspace for whatever you're working. It doesn't even matter if it's just brain-dead manual labor. You, you really need to be in the right headspace. You cannot work effectively if you are stressed out or anything of that nature. Uh, which is one of the more frustrating things about working for anyone is a lot of people don't, under, like, even today, there's this this problem in the workspace, just everywhere, is a lot of people do not understand, like, crunch. Video game crunch is a big thing right now. Of If you push your employees, you're thinking, well, we're going to make deadlines, and if we make deadlines, then we'll make more money, you know, this bullshit like that. And the people that are in charge of corporate don't really understand that that just lowers the amount of money that you make because getting it done faster means that it actually creates errors it creates problems that then need to be fixed after the fact and that adds even more time onto it and idiotic employers will then blame their employees for making those mistakes whenever they were being pushed to the brink of exhaustion and they'll blame them and say how come you created this problem and they might fire employees that were doing a fine job that were being pushed too far and it's just that problem over and over and over again. This really old-fashioned idea that work is just a matter of just putting your nose to the grinder and just forcing your way through it is asinine. Like, the human body does not work that way. The human brain does not work that way. 
everyone needs the time to be able to organize their thoughts and just being happy and being content is that empowers you more than anything else as far as being able to work effectively uh, especially creatively if uh, I'm thinking about two different things here um, if you actually have that in you and you are content with how you're working and you have faith in what you're doing, you have faith in the project, you have faith in your team members, then that counts for way more than just a few extra hours of just pushing your way through a project. That's not going to accomplish anything. And that has been slowly, very slowly been getting uh, better over time. But you still have the old-fashioned idiots that would just refuse to acknowledge that, and they just desperately want to force things to be the, the way that they want them, and to treat people like cogs in a machine. And then whenever they don't act like perfect little cogs, then they want to fire them. Whenever they're the ones that are actually the problem. Like, all, all their lost time and lost resources are systemic of their failures. It has nothing to do with their employees. Although having, make no mistake, uh, having managed uh, some people in the past, sometimes it isn't employees. There are assholes and lazy people that just don't want to do anything as well. Like, it just depends, but you get the idea. Um, I was thinking while I was talking about that, there is sort of one minor exception, I would say, and that probably is in regards to things like writing or... Especially whenever you're younger... Oh, and by the way, I'm trying a sort of a tertiary blending thing. Uh, the Shantae artist does this too. I mentioned this in the past. Where there's one hard shadow and then there's like a smaller uh, sort of end shadow in between the meeting point of light and dark. So I'm just trying that out and seeing what it looks like. Um, but in regards to writing, um, I'm not as... Uh, compelled to be able to write today as I was whenever I was younger and a lot of that just stems from the fact that as I discussed with uh, Wooly on his thing and his uh, Wooly will figure it out episodes is that a lot of writing is just trying to figure things out in my case it was I was very very poor and very frustrated with life and just trying to you know just sort of the advantage for me is that I write in the same way that I talk like right now. In the sense of, I'm always thinking and I'm always reorganizing my thoughts. And you can even hear it whenever I'm doing my commentary. I'll start saying one thing and then I will stop and consider it. And then reevaluate it. And then start exploring a new idea. And then go back and maybe try to unite those two. Because that's just how my brain works. I'm always trying to evaluate, reconsider things. Uh, unite them, figure things out. Uh, as I mentioned before... My name even comes from that. Uh, people think that I'm always complaining, but as I mentioned, uh, it's really just me trying to evaluate things and uh, more importantly, trying to improve things, make them better, uh, figure out why I like them, why I don't like them, uh, where their failings are, and things of that nature. Uh, whereas most people just consume. They just consume and then that's the end of it. Um, <laughs> Pat's this way. Uh, <laughs> this is not really an insult, I guess, but uh, we've had that discussion in the past where he, he'll freely admit, I have no creative energy at all, and it's stupid that people create... He's doing a padism, but uh, he says something like, uh, it's stupid that people create things. You should just consume things like I do. You know, just, He's not actually being serious, but he is. It's one of those pat things. Um, but for creative people, I think that it's kind of common for us to think that way. Um, just to be under a constant state of evaluation and just reorganizing our thoughts and things of that nature. Not everyone's the same, but for me, especially, it's that way. Uh, so in regards to writing, it comes across that way as well. Is whenever I'm writing, I might have a character start talking about something. And I have a general loose idea of, well, the character believes this. So this scene is going to be about them explaining their motivations. So I'll start having them do that and then as they keep going on I start realizing more about 
the nature of what that belief system even means. And then I'll start reevaluating it and considering it more and trying to link it back to the thing because I'm the one, like me, the writer, is the one that's figuring this stuff out. And uh, as a result, that carries through in the writing. And that's a lot of what writing even is in the first place, is just this you trying to figure stuff out. And uh, that's more prevalent whenever you're younger. So in regards to writing specifically, uh, being <laughs> tormented, and this is where the tormented artist thing comes from, is uh, the source of a lot of uh, the source of a lot of epiphanies and uh, motivations and uh, artistic merit for a lot of your work. Uh, a, lo a lot of the reason why artists are often described as being so tortured is because that's the reason why they picked up art in the first place. Is because they're trying to figure out the world around them, and more importantly, they're trying to figure out themselves. So, trying to link this back once again with uh, my general made-up theme of art and whatnot, as we get the drawing done here. In regards to your headspace, it is important. It's almost like Star Wars, trying to work through the dark side versus the light side. You gotta use the dark without letting it actually control you. All, our, all the, our little artists of the world always have all their little insecurities and everything that eat them up and whatnot. And this is a source of a lot of strength for them. And this is sort of a lot of inspiration. But if you allow that to completely consume you, then you might just stop working entirely. So it's important, not even in terms of art and creativity, but just in general, for even for people that have absolutely no artistic ability at all, or any creative uh, ability at all, is a lot of just being a good person, is being able to weigh your impulses and your insecurities against the wisdom of being able to know when to evaluate them, when to not suppress them, but to put them to one side so that you can get work done, manage your life, and then sort of exist within the, the whirlwind of life. That's probably where the whole concept of yin and yang came from in the first place. Just this idea of being a person will always be there. But it's a matter of keeping yourself in motion and keeping yourself balanced and in accord with both nature and yourself at the same time. So, you get what I'm saying. Thanks, Nisox. You did it. She's a good girl, isn't she? Probably. No, she's not. She's actually... It's kind of unclear. It is unclear. The angels were kind of the assholes and the demons were sort of the more the hyper-religious, rule-obsessed ones. It is pretty weird. It's a very Japanese thing. All right, anyways, that's it for now. I'm going to go back to work writing and whatnot. That'll be lots of fun. Expect an actual major project much later down the line. I don't think I'll be able to... I'm trying to make a bunch of, like, scripts right now as opposed to uh, doing any major projects, so it's going to be a minute. I'll try to get more drawing videos out in the meantime. All right, but that's it for now. Freedom for me. Goodbye, everyone.